All right, so we're here, uh, Muscle Beach TV interview, uh, a little different from normal. We have Borlay actually filming over here now. So <laughs> we're in the office of myself here with all my achievements, and uh, we have the honor of having Mr. Matt Jensen, who came all the way from Tennessee to come out to compete in the USA, kind of a last-minute decision, I think. But yeah. he's, uh, he's here in the house, and for you guys that don't follow Matt, he's... Uh, He's been on the scene, you know, he's actually competing in the, in the national show for this uh, Mr. USA competition after winning, uh, how many weeks ago was that? Four. And the show is what now? Uh, Clash of the Capstone. Yeah, so it's out in your area. Yeah. Uh, so he's, you know, trying to win that elusive pro card and uh, he's trained many great bodybuilders and still currently training uh, some big future stars. So, uh, you know, welcome to the show, Matt. And, uh, you know, thanks for giving us the opportunity to talk on the YouTube channel. We've known each other for a while. Of course, I follow kind of what you had uh, going on over the last few years. And, uh, you know, you're one of the new up-and-coming, uh, I would say, you know, even bodybuilding side and trainer side. I mean, it seems like you're passionate about a couple of things. And obviously, that's, you know, weight training and the nutrition. You're very eager to learn. Yeah. I know you ask me a lot of questions. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the old school, new school, is it's a little different. Um, there's a lot of new theories out there. And... You know, the internet has changed a lot, and you've become one of those guys that's become popular because of social media. Sure, yeah. I mean, whereas the magazines used to be the outlet where you would read about these up-and-coming guys, and I think now you're in these times where the gurus are a huge part of these guys' successes, and I think the guru, I, I don't really, I use that loosely, but I think it's more of the backbone and, and someone that kind of monitors someone's progress, and I always tell people, you need someone with a great eye in order to give you honest opinions. And I think that's what, you know, you would probably agree upon is, you know, monitoring new rising star, Nathan DeAsher, you know, he moved out to train specifically with you, yeah. which I think is awesome. I mean, you guys don't know, Nathan came from, you know, he's an English guy, but he was living in Kuwait, training under oxygen. And uh, obviously he came out to you. So, I mean, what's the secret? That's, that's what everyone always asks me. What's the secret? Why, why, uh, would he want to come train under your tutelage? And, uh, you know, we're going to get to your little competition side of what you're doing here. But, you know, I know you're literally like hours out from competing at the prejudging here. It's Thursday, so he weighs in this afternoon. Um, no problem making weight. Uh, yeah, good. And, uh, and uh, I'm sure you're excited. But, um, you know, mind, it's a very crucial time. He's, he's in that water depletion, so it's, uh, you know, the mind's a little slow sometimes, but it seems like you're in good spirits. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, and I, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, this is a, this is like a, a bucket list thing. I've, I've wanted to come here and just see everything that you've done, accomplished, and I've literally watched every video I think that there is that you've done. Um, so seeing this firsthand as opposed to on camera is, is very, very cool for me. So, you know, even though like I'm coming here to compete, this to me is, this is just, this is really, really special. Well, I know you're excited to be out here and compete. I mean, kind of give us a little background on kind of kind of how you got started. I mean, when did you first pop on the scene? I mean, you've been involved with bodybuilding for I'm sure a lot of years, but what do you, would you consider? Like, I can I know my breakthrough, like was competing in California when I was 21 at the Tournament of Champions. I landed my first Muscle and Fitness cover. Like I said, it was the only way I was going to get publicity at the time, and. Uh, you know, that was kind of like where I was made. And if you ask me like the highlight of my career, I can mention Arnold Classic wins or Mr. Olympia wins. But that was one of the highlights was landing my first muscle and fitness cover, which sits above you. And I started to be known, you know, people started to learn who I was. And like, how did you come about um, in the world of bodybuilding? Well, I think, you know, I think my biggest, my, you know, what, what set me off was um, my relationship with Flex Lewis. Uh, and Flex connecting Dallas and I. Um, well, there's a few things that connected Dallas and I, but Justin Compton, I was, I was training with Justin Compton, um, and, uh, you know, Dallas looked up to Justin a lot, uh, and Dallas was in a transitional period with his own coaching where he was looking for somebody new, um, and Justin was associated with Evagen Nutrition, and Justin, they were speaking on the phone, and, and Justin said, hey, look, man, like, you know, I don't want to get involved. Um, but at the same time, he said, if, if I would work with anybody besides who you're working with, I would go with Matt. Um, so at that point, Dallas started to message me and just kind of bounce ideas off me. Um, and 
following his win at the Cal in 2015, we started up literally right away. Um, you know, and I think that was Dallas. Dallas put trust in me on a stage that I had yet been to. Um, and I think that's what really set my career, in, you know, in the direction that it's gone. And, you know, you just mentioned Nathan. Um, so Dallas in 2015, that was his first Olympia. That was the first Olympia that we did together. Uh, and Dallas was, Dallas was very intentional with who reached out to him going into the Olympia and at the Olympia and who didn't. Uh, you know, and, and after we left that Olympia in 2015, he said, you know, I'm going to make sure next year I find a rookie and make sure I welcome them in, you know, and make sure I, I make them feel how I wanted to feel. Mm -hmm. Um, so 2016 comes, Nathan Diasha comes to the show, uh, you know, and Dallas just jumped in and befriended him right at the, uh, they met at the athletes meeting, you know, Dallas said, Hey man, come sit down, you know, come over here. And, um, the next day they, at the, the athletes press conference, they, you know, just talked it up. So that's how Nathan and I got connected. Nathan, at that time, had the respect to know that Dallas and I were pushing for the top and didn't want to get in the way of that. Uh, but once Dallas passed, literally the day Dallas passed, um, Nathan was one of the few people to actually call me on the phone, which meant a lot. Like I got more text messages than I could have responded to that day, but Nathan picked up the phone and called me um, and said, hey man, he said, I want to carry out what you guys were doing. Um, so that's, that's kind of how it started. Um, and it took some time because he was with oxygen and he didn't want me to get negative publicity or, or minimize the negative publicity from him leaving oxygen. Um, so he came over in, in April of this year. Uh, we trained all the way through New York pro through the Cal pro. And then he's actually coming back on this coming up Thursday to train for the rest of the Olympia. So that's so how we got started. Seven weeks out. Yeah, and, and the connection, honestly, is just like, I think I have a connection on multiple levels because I, I treat these guys in a way where I, I really want to genuinely get to know them. Um, you know, like Nathan, it, it's, it's crazy the similarities in a lot of ways. They're very different, but Nathan is a huge sports fan. Um, and Nathan also, like, is very involved in, in politics and... So when he's at the house, it's not like bodybuilding 24-7. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, he's got other interests and he investing his, he's investing his money. So there's more to Nathan than just a bodybuilder. Um, so when we, when we get together, like we have fun and we talk about sports and we watch soccer and then we go to the gym, it's, it's, that's it. Like we shut everything else off and it's about the gym. But I think the connection that I have with the, these younger guys is the fact that I'm still in it and I'm still training hard and I'm still progressing myself. And even though I might not have the, like the genetic capability that they have, they see my work ethic and, and they're attracted to that and they want to they want to be around it. So that's kind of how I would say I got my start is with with Justin um, and, and then obviously Dallas and then it's kind of gone. gone you talk about a lot of guys. I mean, you mentioned Flex Lewis. He was living in Tennessee for a short time right yeah. before he moved to Florida. Um, Dallas McCarver, obviously, but he was one of the younger. He turned pro at twenty one or something, yeah. right? Uh, and then Justin Compton, who was touted to be like the future, right? And these guys are like, they're crazy. They have the crazy muscle bellies. I mean, all these guys have a special gift. And you were a training partner of Justin. Mm -hmm. So what was your goal at that point? I mean, you probably never looked at yourself as maybe being a future trainer. Will you just try to be a bodybuilder? What were you trying to do? Well, no, I was working with, um, I started coaching people locally uh, in 2000, 2011 in okay. Georgia. Um, so I was working with people, but nobody, you know, obviously at their level. Um, and it's kind of cool how Justin and I got connected. I had just moved to, to Kentucky, uh, and I was on the MD forum, and there was like a, a forum that said like best gyms in the southeast. And Justin was like Forge Gym in, in Lexington, Kentucky. So that was 15 minutes from my house, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I messaged him on the message board and I said, Hey, you know, I said, I know I can't push the weight that you can push. I said, but I would just love the opportunity to train with you. You know, and Justin's like, in, in Justin's way, yeah, man, come on. You know, like that was just, that's how he is. Um, so he was actually six weeks out of the, his pro debut in Chicago. Uh, we met up and we trained legs. And, um, after we trained, he said, he said, hey, man, I want to tell you something. He said, you're the first person 
I've ever trained with that's not only pushed me, but second, come to me and not wanted information out of me. And I really, really respect that. You know, he said, everybody comes and they want to train with me to, to, to pull information off of me. Or he said, I could tell you came here just to, to better yourself and to push me into training. And he said, you're welcome to train with me anytime. You know, and that's kind of how it started. Well, he won the nationals or whatever as a heavyweight, right? And put on like right. 20, 30 pounds yeah. between that Quick. and his pro debut, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's why people were probably asking for information. Like, sure. This guy made a huge transformation, right? Yeah. And Ju I got some funny stories about Justin, but Justin was one of the, like, I would say very much like yourself. He was so, very regimented. Right? So methodical. So... After he won the Europa in Orlando in 2014, um, that was in April of that year, he drove with Jordan and I to Junior Nationals. And after Junior Nationals, we were going to eat, and on the way there, he's like, I want you guys to know something. And we're like, what? You know, like, everything starts off with, like, being super serious. And then it, like, comes into something that you could just, that you could just like, laugh at. And he's like, this is my first cheat meal since... The Orlando Europa. But the worst thing was, <laughs> it was, we ended up having to go to Dinner. Yeah, we went to Dinner. Because Dennis. I'm like, of all the so, places, like the I first know, cheat meal, like waste. I'm so sorry. So he's like, he's well, like, Denny's a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, we could have something else open. And I felt, I'm like, well, if I had known this, I would have like made better plans to go somewhere better. So anyway, that's that was Justin. Like, literally, he said, I enjoyed breakfast the morning after the show, and then I got right on my rebound plan. Um, so and he this rebounded is, big. Like, yeah. He was full. Yeah, huge. I mean, huge and hard. So the, the funniest part about that whole thing was we get to Denny's, and he's still very, very strict about how he wants his meal. And he says to the waitress, he says, okay, I'm going to order an appetizer, a main entree, and a dessert. He said, they need to all come out at the same time. I need to eat them all at the same time. <laughs> and sure enough, he screws the whole thing up. Oh, no. She brings the dessert out first. You can see his face just like fuming. Um, but anyway, so Justin, I mean, Justin was one of the most methodical. Uh, everything was on point. You know, he lived to bodybuild 24-7. Um, and, and something cool, too, and I, I want to give credit to all these guys. All these guys that I've helped in a way, they've all, they've all also helped me. You know, um, I saw the way that Nathan conducted himself when he was at the house. He's by far the happiest Contest prep bodybuilder I've ever been around. That's what Matt told me. Ever, ever, like without a doubt, yeah. like he doesn't, he like there's no stress in his world. If he's late for a meal, oh bro, it's cool, you know, I'm not asked. Like that's what we'll say, like no big deal, you know. We actually we got to New York. We had several delays going to New York. Got to New York, we were waiting on Matt. So basically, it had been like six or seven hours since he had eaten, and it wasn't like you would never know, you know, like oh. he, it wouldn't. And for somebody at his level. Where these things matter. Now, granted, he is he's one hundred percent on point. But if something goes off, like his whole world isn't shattered, um, you know. And that really resent. Now, granted, I'm I'm not that that good. Like I'm just going to admit that I'm not. But like I I've really tried this prep to 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 use that example and be like, man, like if Nathan's you know top five in the world, top seven in the world, and he can conduct himself this way, then. I need to chill out. Nathan's a little different, though. Last night when I saw you at the gym, you said, oh, I'm a little flat, you know, I'm starting to really eat. I don't know if Nathan could be flat. No, Nathan, Nathan doesn't get flat. Because he is, the like, the fullest guy I've seen. I mean, I saw it two years ago, and it just, it looks like he's pumped up all the time. Yeah, his upper body, I've never seen his upper body flat. Um, his legs, like, his leg maturity, it's improving. So if something goes, it's his it's legs. Advice, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's but, how you judge him as yeah, a coach. Yeah. Um, but yeah, his upper body, and even like from what we did from New York yeah. to the Cal, and and how he pushed, he just never he never faded. You know, he never mm -hmm. softened up, and, and and never. I mean, we pushed hard in those two weeks. Not only did we push hard, but he had like three to four photo shoots a day, wow. and it was just like he just never went flat. You're, I mean, you're absolutely right. And you learning with each guy different things. I know everyone everyone needs certain things, right? I mean, show with Dallas, like Dallas was way ahead of his time right. as far as physique. It's so unfortunate that you know the sport lost him so early, and uh, you know potentially, I'm sure you think that he could have been a Mr. Olympia. I mean, I've heard it ten times over. You know, yeah. he needed some back improvement, but he was already. I mean, he what he led eighth in his last Second. year. Yeah, huh? second Olympia, he was eighth. Yeah, he was eighth. So that was the best he had done. I mean, I was eighth my 
year before I almost won to Ronnie, I got second. And I mean, to top 10 in the Olympia, like being that young, I mean, his potential was just phenomenal. Like, yeah. I mean, he was just ahead of his time. And I mean, uh, you know, the discipline, it seems like your guys have that discipline. You know, you talk about, you know, even with Justin Compton, I mean, we've seen him now. He's disappeared. He's not planning on come, making come back to right. compete, right? Um, but Nathan, I think he's, he, I think he's still just as disciplined. I mean, you can say he doesn't miss the meals, but he still lives and breathes body. Exactly. Body. Absolutely. Yes. He is, he is an athlete. He's a tried and true athlete. And, and two, you know, like he's had some rough time in his life and he said, he got to the house and he was like, he's like, Matt, he said, you know, I've, I've made some mistakes. He said, it's a blessing for me to be a bodybuilder and wake up every day and do this. He said, I have nothing to complain about. Absolutely nothing, you know. So, but he does like he is. Um, he trains. He, he trains extremely hard all the way through prep. There's never a day where he's like, man, I'm, you know, I'm not really feeling it today, or my carbs are low, or this or that. Like it's never like that. Like he goes in the gym and gives you everything he's got. Um, even more so sometimes, you know, like he'll, he'll he'll put like he doesn't even really honestly know his own strength, you know, because we would we would load up the bar and he'd be like. How many do you want me to get? And I'm like, well, just go until you can. You know, well, well, what do you mean? Like, just give me a number. <laughs> I'm like, well, I he's, he's super strong. Yeah. Right? He's like yeah. crazy bench press. Yeah. And he's like one of these. I mean, he's, he front squatted five plates for eight, three weeks out of New York. Jesus. Wow. So. So I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to say, so your prediction for the Olympia, how do you think he's going to go? Um, I'm going to say he's going to get fourth this year. Okay. And what do you think his long-term potential is? I think he's going to be the guy that takes Phil out. Yeah. If I think out. I think there might if if I had to really like bet on it, I think Phil will lose one year. Somebody else will beat Phil, and then Nathan will take it from there. Mm -hmm. If you know, I, I just because Nathan still has some development to do, he's quickly catching up. Um, I don't know if Rami has all the. He might fall into one of these second place guys that never wins. Yeah, game, exactly. Right? So he might, you know, he can jump Rami. I think he can jump Rami actually. Um, you know, his his dimensions and his waist and quad sweep and shoulders. Um, but he's got that charisma, and he uh, he's not afraid to speak. That's no, for sure. no. Um, you know, I think he's very, very good for the sport right now in a lot of ways. Um, Let me ask a question though. You live in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. okay, when I envision Tennessee, I'm from Massachusetts. I moved to Vegas to win the Mr. Olympia. Um, I've been here since. And it was very easy for me to train here because obviously the shows here, the climate's the same. Uh, the gyms are 24 hours. You know, you train at one of the gyms I train at, which one of 10. Right. Uh, who would think that Tennessee is the place for all these great guys to be training out of? I mean, you mentioned some greats and... You know, Nathan comes out there to train. Talk about your training, where you're training right now, and like why it's why people should take notice of Tennessee. Well, I uh, I am very very good friends with Andrew and Jamie Hall, who own Arsenal Strength, um, and they they've kind of seen my passion and my potential and and what I've done, and they basically invited Jordan and I to come move to Tennessee. Um, they were building a showroom and they wanted it to be my place to, to basically build champions. Um, so granted, like I absolutely love it here. Um, I would love to live here, you know, but at the same time, I think you can create, you can create the atmosphere that you need wherever, you know, wherever you are. Um, so I think, you know, again, I think it comes down to the fact that the connection that, I, that I'm able to have with these guys, the fact that we're both young, you know, I'm, I'm connecting with a lot of younger guys, uh, and then just, we're just, we just get in the gym and get after it, you know, and honestly, the gym, the gym is three minutes from the house, um, there's never any traffic, you know, it's three minutes away regardless of what time So is this a is. public facility? No, it's a private facility. Okay, and they only have arsenal strength equipment in there? Correct. We, we have a few other pieces, and we're going to be integrating a few additional pieces, but it's, you know, I mean... So there's some secret pieces in this gym? Well... Top secret. Yeah. yeah. They're going to be released? Yes. So there's some demo pieces <laughs> yeah. that you guys are trying out? Yes. How big is this facility? 10,000? 10, 10,000 10, mm -hmm. 10, square feet. I picture it to be dark. For some reason, why? Well, it, just, is, it is dark. Okay. We have, like, four sets of lights... So if we're shooting something, we put all the lights on, but most of the time we just flip one of the light switches and there's a bay door, garage door that we open up and that's it. 
I picture like Arsenal being like that hardcore, you know, like the supplement side has like the black label stuff and like that's what I look at. That's, well, it's it's like it's yeah, it's cool. hardcore and it's heavy duty, but it's super clean. Yeah. You know, like we can lay on the floor and stretch afterwards, and you're not like, uh, you know, am I gonna catch something? You know. So, but I think that Arsenal line um, really defies like, okay, this is like hardcore and like they're making a run at really like replacing a lot of the commercialized equipment. Yeah, yeah. We're I mean, like, trying to bring that old school. That stigma of like back. Yeah. I mean, that's how it seems like it represents. You yeah. Know? But I mean, you like training out there. It's, yeah, I love and you it. can train at any time, pretty much. Right. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, I have the key to the place, and um, it's just mine to use with the guys. And you know, I think that that attracts them too is the fact that, like, Dallas didn't like training around a lot of people. You know, so we were able to, to do what we wanted when we wanted, and, and and granted, you know, unfortunately, he wasn't able to train in this new facility. Um, you know, but Nathan's the same way. Like Nathan, Nathan was in Kuwait basically boxed up in a, in a room all by himself for 15 hours a day, you know? So I don't think there's anything on YouTube that that guy hasn't watched, <laughs> regardless of what the sound topic <laughs> is. Um, but, you know, that, that's, um, it's just, we're just creating it. I mean, it's, it's, it's work ethic. It's, um, you know, we just want to win. Just not, I know, but how do you win. find time now? You're, you now, you prepped yourself for the USA. It was kind of what I understand we spoke you kind of like heading towards another direction. Yes. Uh, I was initially going to do North Americans. And you decided to opt this early. Yes. Why? Um, because when we were in we were in California. I was there. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Tamer came up to me and he said, are you dieting? And I said, yes, I am. And I said, he said, for what? And I said, for North Americans. And he said, he said, no, you need to, you need to do USA. He said, it's a more prestigious title. He said, you're ready for that stage. So I just flipped the switch right then. I, I got home and I talked to Jordan. Um, thankfully, my body had been... Because basically, Nathan got in uh, the first week of April. And at that point, I was like, I'm not going to like be going out to eat and doing things that Nathan can't do. This is the first time he's at the house. I want him to feel welcome. You know, like, mm -hmm. let's just click on all cylinders. Start doing cardio together. Start dieting together. Like, So my body was being responsive to that. Um, and, and then so I just was in this position where I could do it, you know, and... And, and obviously, I don't know if Tamer really believes that I can win or not, but I've put everything I have into this show. I know when I step on stage tomorrow, this wasn't a rush job. This wasn't me jumping on stage early. Like, I can't be any more ready than what I am right now. So I'm confident in that, and, you know, and if the package is there. So you didn't have to change a lot. You were heading in. You were pretty much close. I was actually I was having to overeat a few times a week to, to, carry, to not to be ready. Or, okay. Yeah. So I just cut back on my Chick Fil A and went from there. So what goes from here? What do you? What do you? Uh, what's the plan? USA win lose. You um, know, or you just yeah, take, you're you well, like me and you don't make any decisions. I don't really. I, I Jordan and I talked. Um, my main priority is still being a coach, um, and I, and my main priority is my athletes in the Olympia. So like I said, Nathan's getting to the house this week. Um, actually, let me, let me backtrack. My main priority is my family. Um, we have a young son. Yes. And, and I've, from an energy standpoint, I've not been where I needed to be the last few weeks. So I need to get back to them. Um, I think if, if say if I got, if I get third this weekend, it's going to be a tough decision. Um, but I'm also somebody that like, if I have a goal in my head and since I spoke to Tamer, my goal has been to win USA. So if I don't accomplish that this year, I'm okay with not doing every show and simply coming back next year again with the same goal if I'm close. Um, you know, because I know even if, if I do turn pro, I'm not ready to compete with the pros. Um, so I need to get better regardless, you know, and, that, and that's where my mindset is. Um, so I think ultimately win or lose, you know, win, that'd be great. Is this your first USA? It's my second. It's my second, but I, it's, it's really my first that I've prepped for um, I, I did it in 2016. I was in the second call out, but I, I, I had no intention of doing the show. I won the Flex of this Classic two weeks before, um, and basically the next morning we woke up and we were going to breakfast in Dallas. I was like, man, just do USA's. He's like, just, you know, he said, you're, you're in shape. Just do it. You know, get the experience. And I said, I don't think I'm ready for that. And, and honestly, one of the factors that it came down to was I wanted to be able to spend time with the guys that I had in the show. I had three guys doing bodybuilding. 
um, two light heavyweights and a, and a heavyweight. Uh, so I was like, you know, it'll be a fun experience. I'll just go back there and be able to be backstage with them. Uh, and that's why I did it. But I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. You know, I, I knew that in order for me to be my best, I needed to be a heavyweight, um, which I am. So in 2016, I weighed in at 195.7. Um, this morning I woke up and I was 220.4. So um, I'm up 25 pounds in two years. So we'll see if it's enough. In the right places. Yeah. My waist is actually smaller, I believe. Um, well, my belt is just stretched, but regardless. 